Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of green light, matchbox, and then a few other uh, random items that I have picked up throughout the week. Um, earlier in the week I had uh, received uh, several cases um, from green light and matchbox and uh, I had done you know separate videos where I unboxed those but now we're going to go ahead and, and uh, crack these open and take a closer look at, uh, at the cars. Um, so the first first series that we're going to look at is the Barrett Jackson Series Seven, and um, the first car we have is the 1961 Chevrolet Corvette 283 slash 315. Um, Barrett Jackson is is high on my list of favorite series from Greenlight. They uh, it tends to have you know the most uh, realistic models, and then it has. Uh, you know this this information about the actual car that was sold um, at the auction, along with the price that it sold for. So, so this one sold for one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred, which is a uh, which is very cool. Um, I really wish Greenlight would do, you know, a little bit more unique things like this for their their cards. A lot of their series, the cards are just just generic. Um, and Barrett Jackson's one of the one of the exceptions. So this is a uh, kind of a metallic blue, and uh, with some really nice white wall tires, and you get you know painted details all around. And overall, it's not a bad looking model. Um, I'm not going to say that this is my favorite car in the world, um, but this hood I believe does open, but it's not. I'm not going to mess with it because that's uh, that seems like it's not even going to budge. So, now that's interesting. They actually put some silver in the the middle of the steering wheel. That's a nice surprising touch um, for a green light. Overall, this is this is a cool model. Um, definitely not my favorite Corvette model. Although I know for a lot of people, these classic Corvettes are are high on their list. If I were to ask my wife, she would absolutely love this thing. Um, but I'm still, it's cool. I think it's the first version of this I have, so I'm happy to have it. Um, next up we have the 1977 Ford Bronco um, Custom. And uh, they did a pretty good job of representing this, although the truck seems to be white, white, and this picture seems to be a bit off-white. Um, so... I don't know if that's just the picture or if that's really the way it is. These are also kind of an off-white color. So I think maybe green, white act, green, green light actually got this one a little bit wrong on that one. But $110,000 for a 1977 Ford Bronco. Just amazing. Um, the prices on these classic vehicles now just, it just blows my mind every time that I see them. <clears throat> but yeah, this is this is a very cool, very cool model. I've be, really become a big fan of Broncos um, over the last couple years. Love the the latest, you know, the new design Bronco that that Ford just came out with, and uh, these classic Broncos are really cool too. So we do have an opening hood. It's not going to open very far. You can kind of see there's a blue engine in there. The tires on this look a little wide. Um, even though these are off-road tires, they're they're so flat that it they don't look quite right. They need to be rounded a little more. <clears throat> but overall, it's cool. It's a cool model. And like I said, I'm a big big fan of Broncos now. I wouldn't have said that a couple years ago which is, you know, one of many, many vehicles that I have gained a tremendous appreciation for from, from collecting die-cast cars. And this one is another one. Um, if you, you know, three years ago, I couldn't even have told you what this car was. It's a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. Now I, I have many, many versions of, uh, of this car now. And it's uh, one of my favorite 60s muscle cars, or 70s, I guess, 1970, sorry. So this one, uh, 145200 That is 
just it's amazing amazing so this is really beautiful this is a really nice uh, metallic blue with the uh, with the rear um, hemi uh, black section I don't know what you would call it <laughs> hemi hemi giant hemi badge I guess you could say on the side and you know again painted details all around on this one and the tires on this one yeah they're maybe still a little bit wide but not not quite as bad as they are on some some of the green lights but let's see I'm sure this has an opening hood although the chances of yeah no it's not gonna open if it does open um, it's like a little little dirt although the windows are fairly clean which is a common common complaint with green lights but overall it's very nice it's very nice these wheels look really nice very cool next up is the 2020 Shelby Cobra so this uh, this is a reproduction of the Cobra which is why it has the 2020 model year it is not a typo um, and this sold for $220,000 which is again especially for a replica is kind of kind of mind-blowing <clears throat> yeah this this to me is a really nice version of the Cobra it's nice chrome detail on the front and then you know painted details all around chrome detail on the back all black interior not much going on in there but the wheels look really good tires are kind of wide but all in all it's not bad at all I, I think this is probably at least for my collection I don't I don't have a lot of Cobras in my collection but for my collection I think this is the nicest model that I have so far so very cool very happy with this one uh, next up we get another uh, c8 corvette 2020 chevrolet corvette stingray um, Greenlight really likes to put this car out in black i don't I'm not sure why they have <laughs> they have put out i don't know i think four at this point that are that are black and it looks to me like the actual car is on this it looks gray and then on the back, it almost looks like a dark purple more than it is black. But this definitely seems to be black. And this sold for $370,000. <clears throat> well, actually, this isn't just black. It is a very dark gray. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. I had no idea. Through the packaging, this definitely looked black. And it looks black even on camera. <clears throat> but to the naked eye, it is it is not black. It's a dark gray. So if we grab... So here's the Black Bandit version. That shows it better. So you can see the Black Bandit version is definitely black. And this one is a very dark gray. So that's cool. And that explains why they... <laughs> You know, at least they didn't put out a yet another black version, which I was kind of perplexed by. Perplex, hmm, seems I can't speak today. Perplexed by it, um, but this is also the Stingray, so it has the wing on the back, and then you get red seats, which is kind of nice. So this is a nice. This is actually a really nice version, and you know, to the naked eye, it looks it looks it looks much better um, than it does on camera because of the fact that it's not black um, but you, know, you get your painted details all around again and yeah so I'm much happier with this than I was expecting actually uh, when I first pulled it I was like oh what another black Corvette what are they thinking all right so here's the here's the challenge one so the 2017 Ford GT 
in this green color, which is called, uh, what do they call it on here? Verdi Mantis. Um, so this, this 4GT sold for $1.182 million plus another extra 500 bucks. And apparently it's just a fully decked out with every option for GT that I don't know why it would sell for that much. I mean, I know four GTs are pretty expensive vehicles overall, but I don't know. So now the question is in the package, this does not look very good to me. Um, <laughs> but is it going to be more interesting once we get it out of the package? Is there going to be something about this paint that's going to make it pop and be, be more, or make it a more worthwhile model than I'm expecting? And I'm going to say eh, it is metallic or pearl. It's a pearl, I guess it's a pearl green. And again, to the to the naked eye, it does look a little bit better. It's got a little more yellow to it than it's showing up on camera. Um, but yeah, not a winner. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say actually, the version that they put out in red, which was a which was another, uh, I believe another Barrett Jackson release, was was nicer than this one and this one also has I, I can see like four or five quality issues on it already the windows messed up these lights have have flashing both of them have flashing this is not sitting correctly this is messed up so yeah this is a this is a miss for me it's unfortunate because it is a nice Ford GT model but the red one that they had put out previously looks looks much better and I would pass on this one. <laughs> All right. Changing gears a little bit. Um, one of the other cases I received earlier in the week was this Matchbox Collector Series. This is the final mix of the Collector Series for the year. And uh, it contains six vehicles as well. Uh, so the first one we have is this bus 1965 GMC Scenic Cruiser. Not a casting I'm I'm familiar with at all, uh, but it has a bit of character. Certainly not going to be the world's most accurate or detailed model. I don't think buses have wheels that are anywhere close to this large, but I bet it would have a smooth ride if it did, because these are like <laughs> like a. This would be like an off-road bus or something with the size of these wheels. They're huge in, in proportion to the vehicle. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. This is, it's kind of cool. It's, this is, you know, this is a character model or, or charm. It's all about the charm of the, of the, the vehicle. Um, and uh, it's, you know, not, not realistic, but it's cool in its own, own way, I guess. So... Uh, next up, we get the Mercedes-Benz G500 Cabrio. So this uh, this mix has two G-Wagons in it, which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> and the first one is in this blacked-out rendition. Um, this is another case of a vehicle that looks much better to me once you get it out of the package uh, than it did in the package. I actually think this looks pretty good. Um, when it was in the package, it just, I don't know, it didn't look very interesting. It's matte black, so, you know, the packaging is gloss, and, uh, you know, the matte doesn't really show through very well. I thought the wheels were kind of lackluster, but now that I have it out, I don't think they're that bad on this one. Um, they're actually kind of cool, you know, the opening hood, the little bit of painted engine detail in there. Um... It actually shuts pretty good. The panel lines on it are not too offensive. But yeah, this is... I actually like this one a lot more than I thought I would. So that's cool. And then this one... Uh, I'm not sure about this one. 2015 Mercedes-Benz G550 in gold with some gold brown... Brown? Brown? 
brown wheels. <clears throat> um, yeah. Not sure about this. Maybe you could call it another, you know, character model. It's got some character to it. But those wheels, not a good choice. I mean, of all of the wheels that they could have put on this, why these? Uh, Matchbox kind of baffles me sometimes. Because the gold actually doesn't look that bad. <clears throat> it would be, you know, it's kind of a cool vehicle otherwise, but I am not feeling these brown wheels. It's just uh, not, a, not a winner because of that. But otherwise, it's not, it's not a, bad, a bad casting at all. I'm curious... See, I want to grab this era car. <clears throat> um, yeah, so the the matchbox is maybe a little bit, a little bit small. Um, so when I got this era car, I thought it was it was small, um, but I actually measured this, and it is one sixty four scale. So, so the matchbox is a tiny bit small, but but not not bad, not bad. All right, next up. 2016 Alfa Romeo Giulia, and this is another one with a uh, questionable wheel choice. Matchbox. This is an awesome car. It's an awesome casting. I like the the flat or matte gray. Looks good, but those wheels. Why? Why do you choose that color? I mean, the wheels would be fine. You know, make them black or make them... Even white would look better. Or chrome. Chrome would have been cool. But... Nope. Nope. Gotta give us brown. Brown wheels. Oh, it's got a carbon, carbon finished roof on it. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I don't know. This is a cool model. I like this one. This is definitely going to be one of the winners out of the set, but it could have been better. Sorry to say that, Matchbox. Next up, 1964 Pontiac Grand Prix. <clears throat> and this is going to be a pearl white. And this one have an opening hood too yeah this one's really let down by these doors they uh like they're plastic and they just that gap right there is just awful but see look at these wheels you know why if they had put you can do chrome wheels on this do chrome wheels on the julia would have looked awesome front end on this looks pretty good I mean, this would be a cool model, too, but these doors. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, oops. A little bit disappointing on these. I love Matchbox. Huge fan of Matchbox. But these this collector series, there's too many misses in it. There's too many questionable choices as well. But... This one is not one of those. I think this one's cool. <laughs> really cool. And realistically, <laughs> the reason I bought a case was I was, you know, the stores are so empty that I was you know, afraid I would never find it. So I ended up buying a whole case basically to get this model. And then I get one that has messed up paint. Brilliant. And then, of course, you know, since I ordered the case and got it, I, I have found these in store. <laughs> Maybe I need to grab another one of these because of that. So this is, this, this looks really good. I mean, there is a bit of a door gap in there, but um, it, uh, it's, it's a cool, this is a good model. Great detail on the back, great detail on the front. And uh, this is a winner, even with this paint paint glitch. But all right, so bit of a mixed bag with these. 
and that's unfortunately been the case with all of the mixes on these. I, I mean, I'm sure I'll keep buying them because I, I, you know, I just love Matchbox so much, and there is character to them. You know, even the even the ones like this, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, this is a Matchbox. You know, the door's messed up. It's not right, but it's still, you know, it has that charm that that is makes so many diecast brands special and you know even if they are not the most accurate of of uh things okay moving on next up uh so i had or picked up a case of the hobby shop series from green light um and the 1942 willie's mb jeep was security officer and i pulled a green machine out of that case which uh which is kind of it's always fun to pull a green machine I don't really collect these, um, and I'm not going to open this because this will go somewhere else at some point in time. Um, I'll probably end up giving it to somebody, but uh, it <clears throat> it's you know it's kind of cool. The green wheels don't look horrible on it, but it's uh, you know I will I will be finding an, another version, the regular version of this to uh to open and include in the collection uh next up we have this one which is really cool 1965 lincoln lincoln continental with a woman in dress and um so this is hobby shop series 11 and there's nothing special about the the cards on these at all and uh, i have actually grown to like these little figures at first i was like those are just silly why in the world would you want those but now I think they're kind of cool, and uh, this is a this is a very cool model. Giant, giant American boat <laughs> of a car. Um, so it's a you know very nice forest green, the cream or, or beige top I guess. And this thing is it's just huge. Huge. So you got painted details front and rear, and I'm sure it has an opening hood. But is it gonna? Oh, it is gonna open for us. So there you go. Black, black engine. No additional detail added in there. But, but yeah, this is cool. I really like this one, and I like that the hood opens the other direction. So that's very cool. Next up is 1986 Plymouth Grand Fury with a man in suit. Always a cool model. Um, and the man in suit is always handy if you need a lawyer character. And this is a really nice, nice looking version of this car. Just a dark blue, you know, your big boxy uh, 80s. Was this 80s? Yeah. Yeah, 86. 80s <laughs> executive car, I guess you might say. Um, this one does have uh, inserted taillight detail. And painted headlights? Interesting. Yeah, it seems to have painted, just painted headlights. I think I should know that by now. I have several of these. But, yeah, I don't know. It's a cool car. I love, I love this car. It is, uh, definitely grown on me a lot since I started collecting. Um, so the 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe with spare tires. Just, uh, I mean, I guess we can take a quick look at the spare tires. I guess they're a little, just a little bit more blingy than the ones that are on here, maybe. I don't know. Not a huge difference in reality. They're both chrome. They don't seem to be all that much bigger. So this is just a nice basic street version of the Chevy Tahoe. Uh, the only other version I have of this is in a police livery. So it's it's cool to have a 
a uh, you know civilian version and this one has painted details which realistically don't look all that great to me especially the headlights just white there's nothing else going on there um, so that's a uh, I mean, it looks, you know, if you don't hold it up close on the camera, if you just look at it, it doesn't look too bad. But if you focus on it, it's it definitely could be better. But you do get a nice uh, Chevy bow tie on there. And overall, it's a, it's a nice model. Wheels are kind of chunky. Or tires are kind of chunky. Not going to be, uh, be high on my list of favorites, I think. But I'm happy to have, uh, like I said, a civilian version of that. Um, next up, one that makes absolutely no sense to me. 1976 Volkswagen Golf Mark I GTI with race car driver. And this is just in a silver color. No racing livery or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure the Golf Mark I makes a perfectly good, uh, you know, basic basic race car but this one isn't it's just a silver golf which is cool i really like this casting and i really like these basic basic silver or you know whatever color they uh they come in nice engine detail on this one um and this one is painted front and rear. Yeah, just a. This is just a cool, cool little compact hatchback. But I don't know. Race car driver is a little bit of an odd pack in with it. Uh, okay, next up, and the last one in in this set is the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport with backpacker. This one makes a little more sense since. This is a, you know, the kind of vehicle you can imagine a hiker might might drive to the to the trail. It's kind of a cool, cool little figure. And then the support truck. This is what does this say? Bronco off road support truck. Okay. Bronco Sports, interesting vehicle. Um, it's uh, not a completely new vehicle. It's based on an existing SUV or small truck chassis, unlike the other, you know, the regular Ford Bronco. So, painted painted details front and rear. Yeah, yeah, painted. Um, I'd like to see this one in a just stock stock look or with something on the roof. That would be cool. You know, something, some, something, something up here. I don't know. A uh, surfboard or a, just even a roof box or something would, would make this a cooler one. I mean, realistically, this is not the world's most exciting vehicle. <laughs> Um, overall, the other Bronco, or the regular Bronco, the Wild Track, or whatever it's called, is is much more interesting to me. And I, but I would like to see this one. I will definitely get another one of these in a in a plain plain livery whenever they come out with one. Uh, next up, Matchbox. Picked this up today, Black Friday. I actually went to a store, um, to the collectible store. They had fifty percent off of their their pegged. Uh, carded stuff so I've been really interested in these old in older cars all of a sudden or maybe not all of a sudden kind of gradually so this is 1941 Cadillac Series 62 convertible coupe and uh, I just thought this looked cool so you know for 50% off I grabbed it and, and this is this is cool this is the matchbox that I I really love. I, I I always had I always struggle with the collector series and the moving parts series a little bit, but the mainline stuff is 
they do they just they do such a great job on so many of them and this is definitely one of those this just looks really good for it for a you know a dollar car All right, we got to keep it in perspective <clears throat> and you know even if it has a plastic roof that's kind of transparent which is a little bit weird but still this is this is this this model if we can get it to focus this is love it yeah this this is awesome i love this one Uh, and then our one token Hot Wheels for this video, uh, 15 Mercedes AMG GT in yellow. Uh, yeah, and I just thought it was a just a cool one. It is a uh, it is a pearl yellow, which is nice. I love this casting from Hot Wheels. It's a great one. Looks really good in yellow. <clears throat> and uh, Volkswagen GTI. Matchbox older release. What year is this? 2016. So it's probably 2017 release. And I don't know. Something about this gray with the red red rings on the wheels and um, the black in the center of the wheels just looked like a really cool version of this car. And I am a I am a fan of the GTI. So. I, uh, <laughs> I had actually looked at this one in the store several times, but they had it marked for $4. I was like, ah, I don't want to pay $4 for that. But, you know, 50% off, so I paid 2 bucks for it. And it's like, yeah, okay, it's worth 2 bucks. So, it's cool. It's cool. Actually, I like that a lot. It looks really good to me. Uh, then I picked up Atomica, this Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Um... And this is, you know, just a uh, Atomica main line. <clears throat> so, it's kind of interesting. Ooh, wonky, seriously bent wing. That's not good. Okay, it's gonna, it'll reshape. I'm not gonna, I'll mess with it later. But it looks like you get uh, painted detail front and rear. A little bit of character on the headlights. No opening parts on this one. Um, you know, your typical Tomica wheels, although they did do a gold, gold ring around the rims, which makes them look a little bit better. You do have suspension, which is common on Tomica basic line cars. So, I don't know. It's cool. I don't know why I buy these these basic Tomica cars. I just again, it's this character thing. I, there's just something there's something about them that I like. They're they're just fun, even if they're not the most accurate or, or realistic thing, and they kind of always have ugly wheels. Um, so, all right, one more model, and uh, this one is uh, the Challenger 2020 2019. Sorry, Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat from 2021 release three i had bought a case of these um and but i had sent the challenger off as a gift and so i found found one <clears throat> in store this week which was the only thing that i found in uh you know a a regular like a target or a walmart this was the only car that i found all week just Stores are still wiped out. And my, my hypothesis had been, you know, oh, they're holding inventory back for, for Black Friday. And uh, I actually stopped into a Walmart today, which is something I never do. I never go anywhere near a store on Black Friday normally. But I did stop into one today. And no, there's still nothing. Absolutely nothing. The, the pegs looked exactly the same as they did the last time I was in there. So they hadn't stocked anything new at all. So my hypothesis about them holding inventory back was completely wrong. So, and is the hood gonna open on this? Yeah, I'm having absolutely no luck with hoods today. So, oh well. I'm sure we've all seen this Challenger model a thousand times. It's a great model. Looks beautiful. An Auto World always does a great job. Nice metallic green with the black stripe. Just gorgeous. So I'm glad to finally include this one along with its uh, uh, stable mates 
from the from the last mix and there we are thank you for watching and i will talk to you next time